Hello and welcome back to Incredible Inverse and Other Animals with me, Phil. Now in today's video, we're going to have another update video, this time of one of my beetle species, my rhino beetles, the Xylotropes Gideon sumatrensis. So, let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so here we are with the update of my rhino beetles, the Xylotropes Gideon sumatrensis. So, I have, uh, basically I've emerged a whole bunch of adults, uh, so these are all my own bred ones. Um, now, unfortunately, most of them are male, um, which is you know, which is nice. The, they are why you want the beetles for us for the males. The males are the impressive ones, um, but of course, you need the females uh, for the breeding. Um, and unfortunately, I've only uh, emerged successfully one female uh, this time, and a whole bunch of uh, males, both major and minor. So I'll explain um, the differences between those two in a bit. So here, actually, we have a major and a minor male. Um, I have gifted uh, a few away, um, so I gave a couple to my parents uh, for their animal displays, uh, and also gave a couple of minor males away uh, to some friends of mine. So, um, just as pets, because they're kind of without females, uh, they're a bit useless, really. And so. Um, and so what I have to do is actually separate uh, a bunch of the males out of the breeding tub. Um, it is a bit unfair on uh, the female to have uh, a good sort of 10 males uh, trying to mate with her. And I've left one male in there, one major male. So this here is a major male. So, and what it just means is that his horns is either are full, um, you know, he's pretty much perfect, um, which is nice. That means he's had enough uh, nutrition, enough protein, of um, within his diet as a larvae. So, whereas this one here is a minor male, so you can see that his horns are much smaller. So although it's exactly the same species, looks a little bit different. So his horns are not full. Uh, you know they, they can still breed with them with these guys. You know they're still perfectly fine to breed with. So, and they just don't look quite as as nice as you know a major male. No, and as I mean, in with rhino beetles and with some of the stags as well, and um, you get these minors and majors. Um, so I'm having a bit of a dig around here because there is more in here than just two, um, but you don't always find them. Because when I didn't find uh, the others actually, sometimes they do hide away uh, quite well, and I didn't want to dig around too too much. Um, it can be a bit stressful for them, obviously, to, to dig them up. So, and with these two, uh, you know, they found their, their bits of banana. So, which is one of their favourite foods. So, so I feed them a lot of banana, um, as well as beetle jellies. Um, they'll eat uh, melon, they'll feed on apples and pears as well. So kind of any any fruit really. So they find, um, I tend to avoid citrus for these guys. So, um, I also really like the brown sugar jellies as well, I often find, um, which actually um, a lot of rhino beetles and some of the larger fruit beetles will actually in the wild feed on things like tree sap. And stuff so the uh, the brown sugar um, jelly sometimes represents that a little bit so, um but soft fruit you know yeah that, like I say, actually the um, this banana and this a whole banana does not last long um with these guys they soon devour it uh, they mush it up and stuff they'll um, they'll drag the, the skin underground as well and now as larvae for these um they need a lot of rotten wood um, or flake soil so you can rear them up either on just lots and lots of uh, white rotten wood and some of them they do like it really well rotted and some leaf mulch as well um, and I do find the Xylotropes uh, really really need a lot of wood um, or you can use flake soil now I'm attempting to make flake soil myself for the first time I've never made it before I'm um, giving it a go and, so, and flake soil is made out of sawdust um, so oak sawdust, um, you want you want hardwood uh, sawdust um, mixed with yeast, sugar, flour, and you basically ferment that, and so when it becomes kind of like almost like a superfood for for the larvae, um, packed full of protein and all the nutrition they need. So, um, so here is my breeding tub. No, uh, so this is uh, currently packed full of uh, of flake soil that I bought. So, so the soil in here was made up of of sawdust originally and then it's all uh, rotted down it was fermented as in rotten it's fermented uh, for it so it's a fermented substrate and in here I currently have then one pair of the Xylotropes uh, Gideon Sumatransis so this is the male that I chose to stay in here and um, so he's a major male and um, he look, does look really really nice so 
and so you'll go straight for the bananas I've uh, dug them out. No, and again, although there's only a pair in here, again, you know, they go through quite a bit of banana, quite a bit, you know, of fruit, any fruit upon there, they go straight for it. So, and again, the jelly. So, um, if I'm feeding the either the group of males or the group of males will get, you know, three to four jellies at a time, and they'll last them a couple of days. Uh, these guys will get two to three jellies, and again, they'll last them um, often a couple of days. Uh, so, the reading tub is just a bra blast 5.8 litre. Uh, plastic tub and um, I'll just cut out a big hole in the top and put mesh over it for ventilation and then uh, here we go here's the female so I've removed the banana and had to dig around and found her so you can see the difference then between the males and the females the females do not have uh, the horns at all that's because, of because the males use those for fighting and that's where kind of being a major male helps um, they will fight and they'll often win against any minor males um, because they've got the bigger horns, they can lock on and they can basically uh, flip over uh, another male. Because I've the object, you can basically chuck them off the branches, off the logs and stuff, uh, and then find the females. So the females don't have any horns at all. And the female also spends a lot more time underground uh, compared to the male. Uh, so all the males will spend a lot more time out and about. So, um, the males will often kind of wander around the surface, uh, kind of waiting for females to come up fr from out under the substrate, and then they'll pounce on them uh, quite often. And uh, you can see here they've uh, been successful. So this is a rhino beetle egg. So, so I'll just put that back in the substrate. So we've got at least one egg in there, and there should be more in there. I don't want to dig around too much, uh, but in a few months' time, uh, I can dig around and hopefully find uh, some some more larvae. Uh, which will then be my second generation uh, for this species and so, um, which would be fantastic and hopefully by the time that they're larvae uh, my flake soil hopefully will be successful I'll be successful in making the flake soil and it'll be ready to feed my next lot of larvae and hopefully with the next lot I'll get more major males and also hopefully more females okay so that was my update video of my xylotrophies Gideon Sumatrensis my rhino beetles Amazing people, absolutely love these guys. So, um, so glad that I can breed them and get them through um, from larvae to adulthood and um, from all the stages. So, I started off with larvae from these guys. Uh, I've gone from the insect farm originally. So, so I have some of my friends, Mark and Harriet, over there at the insect farm. Um, so I've raised th those larvae up and emerged those, uh, managed to get pairs through that and breed. And stuff. so these are my own bred ones. Uh, then I've then gone through the whole cycle. Unfortunately, I got far too many males. Um, I only found one good female. A couple of females did emerge, but they they just weren't good. They they misemerged. And so one problem sometimes have um, with xylotropes, well, quite often actually, is that they don't make great pupil chambers. Uh, sometimes, um, but also sometimes don't really want to go around digging around in case ones have made good ones. And they end up destroying them. And so, um, but one of our tricks is that we use floral foam uh, to to put pupae in, and um, that either haven't made a chamber, um, or have been destroyed. And so, um, so and unfortunately, I've missed a couple. And so, where uh, yeah, and unfortunately, there were females. Some of them, there was one male as well that emerged, and they weren't good. And um, so, that the elytra, the wing cases were were really all over the place. You could. And really hardened up either and stuff, so they're just in bad, bad shape, unfortunately. Um, but I've got quite a good, you know, emergence rate in terms of the number of emergence, um, and the number of imagos um, that I've got. Unfortunately, just too many males and stuff. So set them in up in their own tank um, and left one male with a female, um, and I've got eggs already. Found an egg, so that's fantastic. Um, so hopefully, you en route for the next generation. Hopefully I can get some more as well at some point this year and um, just to add some new blood in if I can find any. So um, that would be good. So, um, but yeah, they're fantastic Bill. If you're thinking of getting into rhino beetles, xylotropes are arguably the easiest rhino beetles uh, to keep. And so some of the rhino species can be a little bit more tricky. So, um, but uh, you know, if you did like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Uh, please pop some comments down below and if you haven't yet please do consider subscribing and hitting that bell for notifications and help me get to a thousand subscribers for my birthday in may uh, that mean the world to me but until next time guys take care stay safe and keep rocking